number you have dialed is in service at this time. Relations, peace we embracing, streets be adjacent, exile files, hot not mild, like pile style, always show a smile profile, lit like a candle, subscribe the channel, holy words flow out of my mouth like Daniel, love not hate will make us a better nation, this is why we debate, get a revelation, get organized, then we authorize, bring the King James Version cause it's authorized, King Arthur saw a shape fuzz off the side, got pride like a lion in my awesome tribe. Everywhere we amazing, debate talk for you is my favorite station Shekels in the side, Jekyll's when I hide Cause the squad like a bird that speckle when it flies Get the real deal, research in the field Cause you know that man upset you when he lies Make the mind get enhanced, matter of fact thanks showtime in advance Study to show thyself approved. You're now listening to the Made to Talk Radio. Hey, yo, what's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to season seven of the Bay Talk Radio. Of course, in your host, South Showtime, we are back with another classic show for you guys. Well, once again, we are back. If you heard yesterday's show, I announced yesterday that we didn't have any shows for Wednesday and Thursday, but I was working on some things to put it together. Yep, so we got a show <laughs> for today and for tomorrow and also for Friday. Again, this is the last week for the Day Talk Radio, y'all. So we definitely appreciate the people that's tuning in via phone and via Skype all across the globe. All the international listeners out there that tuning up, tuning into the show, we appreciate y'all. Again, the final show is going to go down this Friday, June second. That's Friday, June second will be the final show for season seven of the Bay Talk View Radio. So make sure y'all tune in. We have a jam-packed roundtable, the awesome roundtable lined up for the audience to check out with multiple special guests. So make sure you tune in this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time live and check out the Bay Talk View Radio. Today's show is entitled. Similarities and differences. This is uh, the dialogue session that we usually have over here. We're going to have Mo Cam Malone and Brother Alvin here on the show having a dialogue. We have a particular format for this particular segment on the Bay Talk Radio, Similarities and Differences. Uh, we're just waiting for Mo Cam Malone. Mo Cam Malone, if you're out there, brother, press number one on your phone line, and then we'll bring you in the conversation. Okay, I believe I see you press number one. Hopefully, this is you. Let's see. Let's see. This is my brother right here, Mo Cam Malone. Mo Cam, are you there? What up? Yeah, this is me. Hey, what's happening? How you feeling, my brother? Doing all right. Thanks, man, for having me on. All right. Is there anything you want to say to the people before we begin? Oh, this call just drop, people. This call just drop. All right, but once he calls back, we're going to get it started. And uh, we have our brother Alvin. Let me bring him on the line. Brother Alvin, welcome to the show. What's going on, my brother? Peace. Doing pretty good, man. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, coming on for under such short notice. And, you know, I appreciate you for coming on and, uh, you know, representing. Uh, do me a favor. Let people know, you know, give them a brief bio. Let them know how, let them know how long you've been doing this, uh, things of that nature. A little brief bio. Well, basically, man... I ain't nobody, you know, but a regular brother, you know. Uh, I study the word of God, you know, according to the commandments and the precepts of the Most High God out of these 66 books of the Bible. And, uh, you know, I've been studying for, like, since the 90s. And, uh, you know, I'm just sucking in what the Lord has uh, given me for us to increase. And my thing for the night is, you know, not to debate or be in competition, but, you know, to read this book concerning these issues that we're going to uh, discuss in this platform. And uh, that's it. Glory to God in the mighty name of Jesus. And may his word go forth. All right. And we also have a reader. Reader, you know, let's let people know your name. 
everybody doing? My name is Brother Wendell. And, uh, Brother Wendell, man, we appreciate you. Any words you want to say to the people? That. No, be all right. Just all go to God. May his word go. May his word go forth. <laughs> All right, so that's Brother Alvin right here on the Bay Talk Radio. I believe you got Vocab Malone back. Let's see radio checks. Vocab, are you there? Yeah, what's up? My bad. Sorry about that. All right, yeah, man. So anything you want to say to the people before we begin? Um, I'm glad to be on here. Uh, I put out a few videos recently, They're little small videos, but if you get a chance, check them out. One is uh, seven questions on Deuteronomy 28. And it's real brief. It's only like four and a half minutes or something like that. And I just go through some questions in, in the text related to Deuteronomy 28, uh, as well as um, a video where I give kind of a history and some of the basic beliefs of, of One West. I have that uh, video I just put out. And then uh, the guys I roll with recently interviewed another uh, ex-guy who just came out of um, – uh, Future World of Israel, that interview just posted last night. And so uh, a lot of stuff I think to check out and listen to. I know there's still a couple of things we're working on, working on something at some point with Zadok. Um, I heard Brother Chris wants to do something. So a lot of opportunities, and I'm glad people are talking. You know, I'm glad there's various voices being heard. I think that's helpful so we can really uh, ascertain you know, what's what. And I'm glad to be on a night with a member of Israel God. I got a lot of respect for them, and I know Alvin's local congregation – uh, so I know a couple of them pretty pretty well, especially Jedediah, and uh, I got a lot of respect for those guys. All right, so that's Vocab Malone. We definitely appreciate you as well for coming on on this set show and notice, you know, putting the show together. We appreciate you. All right, so let me just break down the format for similarities and differences. Of course, we're going to start off with an opening statement. It's going to be five minutes uh, to present a topic, read a scripture, back up your stance, explain for clarity, and then ask your question. So we're going to start off with probably uh, Vocab Malone, you know, just, you know, presenting whatever topic you want to present. Then we're going to get a response from Brother Alvin. Uh, your opponent will have five minutes only to respond to the scriptures present, presented and the questions asked. After that, we're going to have a 10-minute dialogue where they're going to talk to each other for 10 minutes. And after that, we're going to the audience for 10 minutes. It's going to be five minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Five minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So let's start off with uh, Vocab alone. You know, if we can put a question out there. Uh, voc- Hello? Hello? Yeah, you're on air. Yeah, you're on air. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right, right on. Yeah, um, are we starting now? Yeah, you start now. Yeah. Oh, by the way, by the way, for those who are new to the show, uh, when you when we get to the two minute mark, you're gonna hear this sound. <laughs> that means it's two minutes left of your time. All right, so go have a good vocab. You can start off with your first question. Um, uh, am I just asking him a question right now first? That's how we're starting. Sorry, I'm 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 trying to make sure. Yeah. I'm just asking um, him a, que- yeah, a question. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah, basically, you have like five minutes to you know. Put a topic out there. Put a scripture out there. You have five minutes to, you know, have your spill of what you want to present. That you, you know, whatever question you have for Brother Alvin, but you have five minutes to do so. So, you know, you want to oh, elaborate okay. and you know, expound on the question. You can do so. Okay. 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 Right on. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that I really do. Uh, I'm not just saying it. Have respect for members of the Israel of God. I was able to attend uh, one of their meetings, and I appreciated the way that they were. You know, they were incredibly hospitable. They dealt with me in a sense of of fairness and and, and honesty and, uh, you know, genuine um, concern and care. I even made sure when I came I brought one black friend and one white friend (laughs) – so, uh, you know, we can see, uh, uh, you know, how the guy with red hair gets treated. <laughs> but he was treated nice, man. I mean, uh, in all seriousness, you know, he, he enjoyed being there as well. And he appreciated the way in which, you know, he was respected as well. And so 
Um, I mean, I'm just saying that I'm, I might elaborate a, a little bit on that, and here's why. Um, I understand people are uh, more and more been kind of just saying, well, uh, vocab, you have an agenda, and we, uh, you know, uh, think you're an agent. I'm not saying everyone says that, or th- those types of things. Um, and so um, sometimes people just want to talk about that, or they'll say, uh, you only focus on the One West groups. But what about the other guys? You know, you're not giving them, in, them any love. Uh, and they, you know, there's, we should have a platform as well. So with that being said, uh, as I have went on in this, I honestly have uh, worked harder and harder to make sure whenever I'm mentioning something, I say specific camp names or specific teachers, something like that. Uh, and honestly, I, I, I'm sensitive to the concern people have about not being careful or precise, but honestly – um, I find that uh, I think I'm much more careful than the average uh, presentation on Christianity I hear by any given Hebrew Israelite, and and uh, I I sometimes don't really understand how come you know Christianity can sometimes be painted in really really broad strokes, sometimes pretty unflattering, but uh, there's a real sensitivity towards the other way, and I've really tried not to do that. I've listened uh, if you listen to me. There's been a number of times I've given a shout out to Israel of God, and then there's even folks like Gorilla Hebrew who's sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum as far as um, you know theology, but I've given him a number of shout outs because I said that you know he knows how to make his point, that he speaks with uh, clarity, you know he's dipping into new uh, resources you know to try to to try to learn things and all that you know he's passionate about what he believes, and uh, and so I I feel like you know, even though there's different theologies there, you know, I, I could talk to someone like that as well as Israel of God. And so I don't really agree with some of the criticism, but I still hear it, and so I'm mentioning it. And so that's why when you said there was this opportunity, one thing I wanted to do was to uh, try to have someone from Israel of God, and it's someone who's local, you know, right here in Phoenix. And so here we are. Now, with that being said, I only have a few more minutes left. The biggest issue that – so I, I, there's good, more good things I could say about Israel God, but there is a big issue I do have with them, and it, 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 it's as far as their, per, their, um, their official teaching goes is that their official doctrine – and you can look up the beliefs on the Israel of God Church in Atlanta. They have the, the beliefs on the website there. They deny the personhood of the Holy Spirit, and of course if you deny his personhood, you're going to deny his deity. They deny both of those things. That is a huge, huge problem. And so even though Israel of God is no one West, and I've never said they were, my biggest issue is their denial of the Holy Spirit as a person. And so, you know, let me drop some examples, and these are just a few of why I think that's a problem. When you go to the book of uh, John and you look at chapter 14, you see personal pronouns used for pneuma. So pneuma is a Greek word that's neutered. However, whenever you see the pronoun used in conjunction with that neutered uh, word, pneuma, whenever you see the pronoun, it's masculine, So, and it's a personal pronoun. Let me give you an example. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom – and then right there it has the Greek word ha, which is a neuter, uh, neuter relative pronoun. The Father will send in my name. He, echinos, that's a masculine demonstrative pronoun, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you, John fourteen twenty six. Um, that is important because there's a switch from verse 17 to verse 26, and it's probably by design that John does that to make sure that we ensure that to ensure that we have a correct understanding of that the Holy Spirit is personal, and in fact He can be grieved. So there's emotion there. Ephesians 4:30 says, "Do not grieve the Holy Spirit." Um, in fact, Romans 15:30 talks about by the love of the Spirit, and a really big one is Acts 13:2. Where um, Barnabas and Paul, Saul, are about to be set apart for some work, and it says the Holy Spirit says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. So the Holy Spirit's making a decision. He's calling, and the scripture says in Acts 13, 2, that the Holy Spirit says. Inanimate objects don't say. They don't call. They don't, they don't do these kinds of things. You can't grieve an inanimate object. The Spirit of God knows the thoughts of God, 1 Corinthians 2, 11, along with his own mind, Romans 8, 27. Self-consciousness, which the Holy Spirit has, which is like the ability to objectify oneself or to, to think about yourself, that is something only a personal being can do. 
You can't do that if you're an it or a force. And it goes on and on when you look at this term. All right, that was Volcan Malone. Actually, I gave six minutes for that one, so I have to give six minutes also back to Brother Alvin. Uh, Brother Alvin, you have six minutes to respond and, you know, the, without, without interruption and answer whatever you want to answer. You have six minutes to do so right now. You can go ahead. First of all, glory to God in the mighty name of Jesus. A shout out to my family, to all the children of the covenant, sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, our camp ILG nationally, you know, uh, as the uh, Holy Spirit. I'm not big on linguistics and languages, but it is written in Psalms 19, third verse. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So we speak English, and the Lord, he gives us this information in English, and it's the simplicity of Christ, man, and we can deal with this issue. So you were talking about John 14. It said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, we understand that is a being. And according to the scripture, we know that this this Holy Ghost is none other than Gabriel, but it's not God. We know we know He is a being. We know that. But uh, I'm gonna finish it up because I got the scripture already, brother Wendell. I'm gonna step on your toes, but I got the scripture already. Go ahead. Okay. They say uh, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So this is His job. He gonna teach you. Whatsoever the Most High God say unto us in this word, and he's going to bring all things to your remembrance concerning the truth. Now, I'm going to go over to Daniel and show you this Holy Spirit doing his job because you identify him by his job description. It's as simple as that, you know. Daniel, the... Uh, I don't stop it. I'm not looking for that. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. I think it's now. Yeah, it's now. Okay, Daniel was uh, praying concerning the uh, the prophecy that Jeremiah had prophesied concerning uh, Israel being in captivity under the Babylonians. For, uh, 70 years, but it turned out to be 490 prophetic years, and he didn't understand that, and he wanted some understanding, so he started fasting and praying. In verse 21, 99 and 21, it says, yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. There go his job description right there. You know what I'm saying? And he's a holy angel coming from God. You know, therefore, angel and spirit, you can interchange it, or you can say spirit or ghost. You know, holy ghost, holy spirit, holy angel. It's the same thing, but we just put the name on them, and we just put the job description on them. And uh, according to the scripture, as it is written, there he is right there. And on the second note, I would like to uh, present a few scriptures to Bokab concerning God's protocol because he's, he's trying to, uh, you know, I know why we're bringing forth the truth, but it's, it, it got to go forth according to the way the Lord will have it. Let's go to uh, Matthew, the 10th chapter. And that's what you see what Jesus said to his disciples. Because in order for us to get some understanding of this book, God got a protocol, and uh, he would not breach it. He would not break it. Scriptures can't be broken, and it must be done in that way. We are 10 and 5, brother. <clears throat> These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go, into, go not into the way of the Gentiles, 
and into any city of the Samaritans. Samaria, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, Jesus is sending his, his apostles to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to dispatch, dispatch his priests so his priests could, you know, get back in office and teach the people because we in charge of teaching the rest of the sons of Adam. That's what we chose them for. Go to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Pick it up at verse 21. These are just some of the issues I'm just pointing out and see what type of uh, response I'm going to get from this brother. Pick it up at verse 21 and read that, brother. Matthew 15 and 21. Then Jesus went in and departed into the coast of Tyree, beside it. And behold, the woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievous, vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his, adi- and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent. I am not sent, but into the Lord's sheep, the house of Israel. So Jesus, you could basically say he ignored her according to the scripture. And he explained that I'm not, I'm only sent to the house of Israel to dispatch my priests so they can preach the word and get this creation in order and bring them back to the Father, the Ministry of Reconciliation. All right. All right, Brother Alvin, time is up. So what we're going to do now is going to have you guys speak to each other in the dialogue session. You have to speak to each other in this particular part. It's 10 minutes. You know, again, you can speak to each other. On a particular matter, let me open up both people's phone lines. Mm-hmm. And I guess, Vocab, you just go ahead, man. You have to speak to each other. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, you, would, you would recognize that in the Old Testament scriptures that uh, they were familiar with Gabriel. Uh, would you say that, you know, he was, he was familiar to them because you mentioned that passage in Daniel? Then what would be the meaning of Jesus saying, I'm, I and the Father are going to send to you another helper. And then if, the, if Gabriel's uh, another – he's a helper of the same kind, John fourteen seventeen is the verse I'm referring to. How is Gabriel another helper? Is he a helper because like Christ? Jesus was – can I respond? Yes. Okay. Jesus, he was the comforter because if he – I'm going to go to Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Let me read this oh, I first. Agree. So, uh, you want, let, let's, let's let the book talk, you know, brother. I ain't trying to cut you off or nothing. Isaiah, the 61st chapter. And, uh, the, uh, verse 2. No, verse, verse 1. Verse 1 and 2. Isaiah, here you go. Isaiah, verse 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. His mission was to do these things right here when he came in the flesh. So he was the comforter. The comforter cannot coexist when he's on the scene. Therefore, when he was leaving, he told them that he was going to give them another comforter because the Holy Spirit cannot coexist while Jesus is on the scene because he's a head man. He, he, why would he need them there? You see what I'm saying? He came to dispatch the priest. But after that, then the protocol of God, when he went back to his God form, was set in order for him to bring forth the, the truth to all our remembrance and uh, give us that which the Lord had already had told us, like he read all in right. John uh, 14. Do you believe that Gabriel is the spirit of the Lord? Yes, sir. Satan, Satan is the spirit of the Lord, but he's not a holy spirit. Do you believe, do you believe that Gabriel is God? No, sir. Not at all. Okay. Acts 5-4 says, 
while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why thou hast conceived this thing in thine heart, thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So Ananias and Sapphira lied to God. Now, how do they lie to God? Let's just look back one verse. We always got to keep things in context. Verse 3 says, Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So then look at Acts chapter 5, right after verse uh, 4, or I'm sorry, right after verse 3 comes verse 4. So we don't want to jump and, and, and go anywhere else when we've got chapter 5, verses 3 and 4 right in front of us. And we say, Peter says in one part, you've lied to the Holy Ghost. Then in the very next part, you've lied into God. So number one, the Holy Spirit is God, clearly from this. Otherwise, Peter just speak in confusion. And number two, that eliminates Gabriel from the equation. No. How do you answer the verses 3 and 4 back to back that it's clear that lying to the Holy Spirit is lying to God? I understand that. God is a, God is the Holy Spirit as well. You see what I'm saying? So, then, so you're not so the Gabriel. Can you talk, let, me, let, me, let me finish, brother, if I, if I may, or if, if you want to uh, continue, go ahead. No, go ahead. But uh, what, like I was saying, you have to be definitive when you talk about the spirit, because it comes in many forms. The word of God, it's a spirit, and it's holy. It's a holy spirit. Gabriel, he's a holy angel and a spirit. He's a holy spirit. Jesus is holy. The Son of God, he's a holy spirit. The Father is holy. The spirit as well, he's a holy spirit. In fact, he's the father of spirits, holy spirits. So you have to be definitive when you deal with the, these type of issues, you just can't take it upon yourself and uh, just try to interpret the scripture. You got to let it slip, interpret itself. But I'm going to go to uh, Genesis, the 22nd chapter. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. An angel talking in the first place of God to show you how, these, how God works. You have to understand how God works. You have to be taught, man. You know what I'm saying? Not to disrespect you or nothing like that, but this, that's just. Jesus said it, man, it is written, you know, uh, how said he heal without a preacher? And how said he preach himself except he be sent? You see what I'm saying? By the mouth of Paul. So it's written, brother. But uh, go to uh, the 22nd chapter. Uh, well, let's just pick it up. And, well, hold on, I'm, brother. Let I'm, me read this, and I'm going to let you tell me on. Because uh, the answers are kind of uh, long. Verse, uh, I, I mean, if you, want, if you want the word of God or you want, you know what I'm saying? Just a summed up uh, preconceived notion. I could give you that, but I'm not here to give you that. I'm here to give you the word of God. Read uh, verse, uh, <coughs> verse 11. This way Abraham was trying to slay uh, uh, Isaac. Go ahead. Read verse 11. Verse 11, brother. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Who called out to him? The angel, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead and read. And he and said, he lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything with him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. Now drop, drop down to verse 15. Look at, look at this benefit you're going to receive. But look who's going to be talking and delivering what the Lord Hold on, hold on. The angel of the Lord called us to Abraham Jesus. out of heaven. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. We just lost, uh, we just lost uh, vocab on the line. We just lost vocab. It's part of interruption. Stand by, y'all. Also, I'm hearing an echo on y'all. And right. whenever you know the reader comes in, I'm hearing an echo. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know a speakerphone. I don't know if the, the volume is up in your speaker or on the computer. But I'm hearing like a, a echo coming from your end. I'm just going to wait okay, for vocab to call that. back in. Yeah. Let's wait for vocab right. to call back in. I don't know what happened. But, again, a number of people, if you, after this, we're going to get here from the audience, y'all. Y'all have any questions, any comments, you know that number. It's 319-527-6239. I'm going to give the audience at least 10 minutes to ask their questions, and then we're going to get right back into it a little later on. Okay. I see vocab alone is back on. You can go ahead, fellas. You can continue. Read verse 15 and 16. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham out of heaven the second time. Who called out to Abraham? The angel of the Lord. Go ahead. What did he say? And said, by myself have I sworn, 
said the Lord. Said who? Said who? Said the Lord. But the angel talking, right? Right? Yes, sir. Exactly. Continue to read, brother. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiply. That's good, brother. That's good. That's good. But you see right there what an angel was talking in the first person of God, because he's a representative of God, and God, that's how he works. He sends out his angels because they minister in spirit to do his bidding. So. All right, stand by once again. Uh, we have some technical difficulty. Vocab uh, call dropped again, y'all. <laughs> it dropped again. Hold on, let me see what's happening. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a two minute break and we'll find out what's going on. And when we come back, you know, hopefully we'll get this uh, dialogue session continue, you know, going on. We'll be right back after these messages. Stand by. Study to show thyself approved. And now listen to the Made Talk Be Radio. Listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. I believe we back on. We back on. Vocab, say hello. Let me do the radio check. Hey, what's what, up? Everything's working. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so my check. Good. Sorry. Good. I guess vocab. You can uh, say a piece, guys. Well, yeah. Um, um, brother Alvin, do you believe that you can blaspheme Gabriel? You can blast in the Holy Ghost if that's what you actually. Yeah, because that's an unforgivable sin. Why would it be an unforgivable sin to blaspheme an angel but not God? That's not even what that's talking about, brother. That's talking about knowing the Word of God and teaching otherwise. That's what that's talking about. That's, you that's not what it's talking about. Well, no, I'm not, no, no, I'm not going to no. accuse you of nothing, but it seems like it's, it's Let me break it down. It's, it's word play. Instead of let's just deal with the scripture. I'm asking the question from the scripture. So when you say it's wordplay, you are accusing me of something. Let, let me let me show you what's going on. The context is Christ performed miracles. Well, okay, Christ performed miracles, and the Pharisees attributed those works to the devil. Correct. Then right after that, he says, "You can say what you want about me, but if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's unforgivable." So that's that's no wordplay. That's mm-hmm. the that's the context of the narrative. Now what I'm saying is. Why would it be a, a blasphemy to blaspheme a, a, an angel, but not blasphemy to it, – it's not unforgivable to blaspheme the son, but it is unforgivable to blaspheme an angel. That's what I would like you to explain. See, what you're doing, brother, is you, you're putting the Holy Spirit in a box. I told you you have to be definitive when you talk about the Holy Spirit. Since I identify Gabriel according to his office, like Jesus said he would come and what he would do, since I identified him, you're directing all the Holy Spirit that's, that's, that's in the Bible to Gabriel, and you can't do that. You see what I'm saying? 
Oh, well, brother, well, it seems like you're not going to answer. Uh, All right, let me be definitive I'm, then. I'm, I'm, answering, I'm, I'm answering you, brother. You have to be definitive. Let's go to that scripture. Let's go deal with it, brother. But what you already it? said what, that. What scripture is that? What scripture you is already, let, me, let, me, let me do something. Let me ask you another one because I, 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 I would really like to get a direct response. Who announces? I gave you. You got to be definitive, okay. brother. Okay. okay. Who in, in Luke chapter one? Who announces to Mary that she will be uh, conceiving a son soon? Who is that that does that? Gabriel. Gabriel. And what does Gabriel say to her when she says, "How's that going to happen? I haven't known a man." What does she say? What does Gabriel say? Let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. Luke, Luke one chapter one, right? verse thirty-five. The Holy Ghost shall come upon let's, thee, let's go and the power. Let's go, let's go look I, I, at I'm it. reading it. Brother, I'm reading it. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, if Gabriel is the Holy That's Spirit, right. why did Gabriel go to Mary and then tell her, uh, you're going to conceive a son? Why didn't he say, I'm going to come over you, and I'm going to impregnate you? He doesn't do that. He says, the Holy Ghost, he's speaking about somebody else, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest. Gabriel is not the power of the highest. Shall overshadow thee. Do you see this? So right there, you and see shall, Gabriel is not back, the Holy back. Spirit from Hold Luke one thirty five. Go up to thirty two. It's gonna tell you who that is. Because this is the son of the highest. Thirty two will tell you. Read right, it. but I'm not asking about the identity of the son. I'm asking about the identity of Gabriel and no, the Holy you said, Spirit. You said concerning this. You said the highest gonna overshadow thee. It just came out your mouth. Now go to thirty two and get your answer. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. So that's the identity of the Son. What I'm asking you is, if if no, Gabriel that's the is identity angel, of the Father. Hold on, hold on, brother. I don't mean to cut you off, but that's the identity of the Father. Him be, being the Son of the Highest. The son, who's higher than the Father? Okay. No, nobody's nobody. higher than the Father. So they, that's the Highest that's going to overshadow her. So that the power of God brought this for. So you're telling me the angel Gabriel? Is going to be the same one who's going to uh, c- make the, the, the conception happen. So if, if that's the case, I, I want to know why doesn't Gabriel say, I will come upon thee? Why does he say the Holy Ghost will come upon thee if it's the same person? Let me ask you a question, Will Tell. Well, you're not going to answer. God a spirit? Let me ask you a question first. Is God a spirit? John chapter 4. Yes, he is. Spirit is a slang word for ghost, ain't it? Well, you're talking about the right? English, but... Ghost is a slang word for spirit. In English, right? but it's, when it's we go to the... It's the same thing, right? It's the Father in, Holy. I've heard this this done before, but instead of asking the question, you're trying... That's the wordplay. You're actually going to do an equivocation not, with some magic. It's written, brother. I'm asking you this. Why doesn't Gabriel... It? Listen, please answer this question directly. Why doesn't Gabriel say, I will overcome you, or I will come upon you? Why doesn't he say that to because her that's when not he's the, the one case. sitting there? That's why. I know it's not that's the case not the because case. Gabriel's not the Holy Spirit. That's why it's not the case. Why doesn't he say that? It's confusing. It'd be like if I was uh, standing in someone's living room, and um, they're asking me to paint the walls, and I say, um, and, and they're, they're saying, hey, how's this going to get done? And I say, well, Mr. Matt, he's going to come and paint these walls. That'd be confusing if I'm talking about myself. Wouldn't I just say, I will come paint these walls? Why am I going to throw out some slang term, speak to myself about myself in the third person with some term she might not even know? That makes no sense, especially when if you read Luke chapter 1, it keeps on referring to Gabriel as the angel. 135 says, and the angel said, right? So you're not really answering the question directly, and you're you're a good guy, but the problem is, the problem is you're saddled with bad doctrine. You need to break out of the, this idea that the Holy Spirit isn't it. When and I already showed you how in the Greek the personal pronouns are used, and you talked about precision, but yet I you want to get English, sloppy brother, and call him. Greek. Right, but the Bible is written in Greek, okay? So it's okay to go to the Greek Bible because the Bible is written in Greek. In Greek. But I don't speak that. Okay, and then but it's I'm, written, the Lord said, in the, with a stammering lip and a longer tongue, will I speak to this people? So, Brother Alvin, it's that's, translated that's, into English because in the English, learning it in another language. No, but you, you know what a person you're not going to get no greater information in Hebrew or in Greek than you will get okay. in English or China. It's the same Brother thing. Alvin, God is God is not a brother, brain God. It's not a Brother Alvin, person. 
Brother Alvin, listen. In the English, this personal pronouns I'm speaking of are translated. That's why it says he in reference to the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say it. These personal pronouns in the Greek are translated in English, and that's why I if you, you look. Brother. But l- listen, the reason I'm. That's, 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 that's your what? belief system, vocab. I ain't trying to change that. But I'm going to read this again for you because I'm going I'm to read it according oh. to the scripture. 35 it said, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Okay. Then you go up to 32 and say, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, the Son of the Father. That is the, the, the highest that's going to overshadow this, this, this female, this virgin, his mother Mary. It's simple as that. You can't read the Bible in chronological order. It's not like that. This is not like a novel. Excuse my passion, but I'm passionate about this word. But uh, we can well, move actually, on. It's written right there. Well, well hold on. By you saying that, are you saying the father is the one who caused uh, the virgin conception? I've read. I've read what the scripture said. That's it. That's all. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away from it. Deuteronomy 4, chapter. But, but listen, here, here's what's going on. Check this out. Here, here's the reason why this is important, okay? Because you want to minimize it and just say, well, that's your doctrine. But listen, I, I you're said one, about your doctrine? I, yeah, you did. You said that's your belief. You just said that's what I'm you believe. Gonna, I'm not going to try to change what, it. Well, Cal, you know what? We're not going to get into uh, a bogus cross examination because I want it to be truthful. You know, I'm trying to deal with, you know, this thing with humility. So, uh, I mean, if you want to believe that, that's your choice, brother. I'm not trying to convert you or convince you. All, all I'm here to do is read the scripture. If if the Holy Spirit truly is Gabriel, the Bible should have every time, instead of writing this new word, this pneuma, instead of writing that word, it should have used the word Gabriel. You don't play around with names like that and cause confusion. And the problem is... The Hey, fellas, I apologize. Time is up. We got to go to the audience now. We got to go to the audience. I know some people want to ask some questions and some comments on a particular matter. Again, the number to call in, family, is 319-527-6239. If you're listening on social media, if you're listening on Blog Talk Radio, that's the number to call in. Once you call in, you got to press number one, and that lets me know that you have a question for our vocab alone or Brother Alvin. Again, this is uh, 10 minutes for the family out there that want to call in. Again, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. Let's go to the first caller. We'll go to 559-709. You're live on the air. Is that a question? Yes, uh, God bless you, brothers. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, how you doing, um, uh, Malone? I'm doing all right. Uh, yes, I'm a Christian, and I just want to read some. I tried to read some last week, but you guys cut me off the air. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The reason why them, the Israelites and Hebrews can't understand scripture is because they are blinded. they living by the law. And the Holy Spirit haven't opened up the scriptures to them. If I could, can I read something? But matter of fact, uh, vocab, can you read it, brother? What would you Second like me Cor- to read? Second uh, Corinthians chapter two, starting with verse two. Verse verse ten. No. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse three. Start with verse three. Okay. For as much as ye manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the Living God, not tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. He reads. And to and such trusts have we through Christ to God with. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Stop right there. Christ is talking about the letter, the Testament. That's the Ten Commandments in the Spirit. Keep reading, uh, vocab, please. 
with but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away with was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. What? Twelve. Seeing then that we have such a hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as uh, Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. For their minds uh-huh. were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this yeah, day, yeah, when yeah. Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Yeah, it is who is read? Moses? Yeah. Moses, there is this. Exactly. Moses. Hey, let me, uh, you let me respond to that uh, right quick. First you Israelite, like, you read Moses, and Hello. you can't see. That's why you bl- you blinded, my brother. You got to live by the Spirit, okay, by brother. the words of Jesus Christ, and not by the words of Moses, my friend. I let him respond. Yeah, let, me, respond let, me, let, me, let me uh let me say something I forgot to mention, matter of fact. And I'm gonna read the scripture first to to, to to bear it out. My brother, we are the original Christians. And I'm not trying to be pompous, but I would not abdicate my role in following Christ. We are the original Christians. Acts eleven, twenty five and twenty six. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for the seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, the church, and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. It is written, we are the original Christians, brother. We are followers of Jesus. And you say we blinded because we want to keep the commandments. Let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Let's wait a minute. Wait, 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 my friend. Can, can, can you on, stop brother. for a minute? Hold on. Hold on. Let me respond. Let me respond. Use this mic, child. I haven't heard this show many a time. Let me respond. 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 Let me it say, here is the patience of the saints. It is written, the, the sanctified ones, the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus and believe in Jesus. They don't just believe in Jesus and, and, and say faith is the ultimate uh, component that you have. You got to have both components. That's why James say faith without works is dead. And I'm going to let Jesus clarify this his, himself. In the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matter of fact, the 19th chapter. It is written, brother, you can't get away from it. The book is, speaks for itself. I don't have to defend the scripture. The scripture defends itself. Verse 16. If you don't believe me, you'll believe Christ, won't you? And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life live forever in the kingdom of God? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That's plain. That's simple. simplicity. I'll say one thing to you, please. Please, yeah, sir. you respond. That, that. I'm trying to have a dialogue with you, my friend, and you haven't addressed what's within Corinthians, what it said to this very day. To this very day, when you read that law of Moses, you are blinded. To this very day, 2017, my friend, you can't get away from that, my friend. Okay, my brother. That's your perception. I'm a black man. I read the book. It is written. I'm a black man, my brother. I read the book. If I'm a black man. Kind of life, Jesus said, keep the commandments. Now, your argument is not with me. It's with the one who said it and had it written. And my and fact, what, what, first John, first John, first John, uh, the second chapter, I'm going to tell you a little something about yourself, brother. It ain't need no disrespect, but it's going to tell you something about yourself. 
And hereby, three, verse 3, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keep his, not his commandments, is a lie and the truth is not in him. I didn't write that, brother. It is written. I rest my case. My friend, I'm a black man and I'm a Christian. And I'm a Jew by <laughs> spirit. If you... Excuse me? I said, what I'm, saying, I'm a Christian as well, but I'm a follower of Christ. I, I'm a follower of Christ too, my friend. What I'm saying, friend, we live by the words of Jesus Christ by the spirit and not by the law. Don't mean that we don't do what the law says, my friend. But when you lean your hat on the law, you can't so see to the future. You going to disqualify or you going to keep it, man? You, you all over the place, man. The Lord is not the author of confusion, my brother. You say, oh, in one sense that you don't have to keep this law. That's why I'm blind because I'm keeping the law. And I just showed you what Jesus said, if you want eternal life, you keep the commandments. And I showed you where in Revelation, John wrote that here's the patience of the saints that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And if you could go to uh, Revelation, the 22nd chapter, let me show you the keys of the kingdom that God actually gave to Peter. It says, uh, 22... And verse 14, bless our day that do his commandments. Not just one, but plural, all ten. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates in the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers, hormoners, that's in the law, ain't it? Thou shalt not commit adultery, murderer, thou shalt not kill, idolater, thou shalt not have no other God before me. And who shall love and make it a lot, thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, I rest my case. It's written, brother. I ain't got no ill will against yeah. you. You believe what you want to believe. I'm here to read the book. Yeah, let's squeeze in another person, another caller. 706 505. You're live in there. Yo, what's up, Kyle? This is your hoop and all that. They don't make eyes the one that don't read it. Not the one that read it, the one that don't read it. Is Hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me, Kyle? Yeah, 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 who's that? Yeah, this is you hoping on the five oh five. Somebody needs to turn off their uh their speakers or something. Yeah, that feedback. Yeah, somebody yeah, somebody got the speakers on, turn it off, or just mute your phone. Go on the headphones. Mute your phone. Brother Alvin. Mute your mute your phone if anything. Okay, good. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, this is your hookah Can you hear me, Sal? Yeah, you good now. You good. Okay, I got a question for Vocab. Um, is there some type of ranking system in the Trinity? Now, let me make it clear. I know that the Son says that the Father is greater than, than he is. But is there some type of ranking system in the Trinity? It depends what you mean by that. If you mean ranking in the sense of one is inferior in his person and who he is, no. But if you mean ranking in the sense of they have different offices, and different roles that they play within the Godhead, then yes. So I wouldn't use the word rank. The Bible doesn't use that type of word. I think the biblical description of the persons of the Trinity would be distinctions. There are distinctions and roles, and maybe you could use the word offices, uh, but I don't know about ranking in the sense of uh, – it, it depends what you mean by rank. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but, I hear Christians say the first person of the Trinity, second person of the Trinity, and third person of the Trinity. So where in Scripture does it say that the Ruach HaKadosh is the third person of the Trinity? Right. That's a manner of speaking. We don't have to use that. We could just say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the reason why is probably twofold. One is because when Christ gives the commission to the disciples in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, he goes in that order. That's the way he lays it out. If there's three names, you've got to say one name first and one name last. And the way that Christ chose to do it was Father, Son and Holy Spirit. By the way, uh, most Hebrew Israelites I know of do not obey this command because they do not baptize people in the name of the Father and the Holy Son and the Holy Spirit. That's one reason. The other reason probably is in the sense of the order of how they were revealed. The full nature of God's nature was not fully revealed all at once, just like not all commandments were given at Sinai all at once. So, it's but, do you, first, but you do know some. You do know some Yehudis or some Hebrews who do baptize. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Ruach, in the well, name of the Well, let me be Jesus. honest. I believe you if you're saying that, 
But saying I know that, actually, no, I've never met any who baptized the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. We talked plenty. We talked a long time ago, and I've been told you that what I believed in. So you have talked to someone who got baptized. So into you've the rock. so so you've you've witnessed somebody bat, be baptized in the name of the no, Father, Son, and Spirit. I said you do know. You do. You said you didn't know. I said you do right. know. I, well, I didn't know that that's what you believed. Time, and I explained to you what I believed in. So you do know a Hebrew. Or Yehudi that does those things. So you you uh, do believe, you affirm the personhood and the deity of the Holy Spirit? What do you mean do I affirm? When we first talk, then I'm not tell you if you read in perfect Hebrew when it talks about the creation. In perfect Hebrew, it says Ruach Elohim. It don't say Spirit of God. It says Ruach Elohim in perfect Hebrew. Bro, bro, listen. I don't remember everything you believe. I, I haven't been writing it down, so yeah, if, because if you, you do, been focused on one breath cast. You've been trying to paint a negative picture about the uh, all Hebrews. We know your well, agenda. Hey, you have okay, trying to false agenda, and it's time for us to expose you and call you out. If if you want to make it, if you want to make it personal, then let's make it personal. When you was on there with with uh so real, you uh, I believe that was a show you called in and said I was running from you. Now that's the thing to me. That's the thing to me. Hey, is this what because this dialogue about brother? Uh, yeah, but, go ahead, but man, so my man gets on sound okay. show and says I'm running okay. from him when he's never he's never challenged me to debate. Hey, and I saw I asked him. I've called this man said, so many times. This man has been said, ducking and dodging and avoiding phone I, calls. Bro, I done called him out on Gmail show. I done called this man out plenty right, of times, bro. He been running. Right. He been running. Right. Listen. I, I hey, honestly, I never should have given a guy like stop. you my my number. You know what I'm saying? And me not returning your phone calls doesn't equal running. It means I'm not returning your phone calls. You be calling a lot, my man. You know what I'm saying? You, and we've had a number of conversations, so it's not like I've never talked to you on the phone. But to say running, that's different. Not returning phone calls uh, as much as you call does not equal running. So if you challenge me to a debate and I didn't know about it, well, then I'm sorry. But to say someone's running implies you challenge them to hey, debate and they didn't the accept. Show, but you don't uh... – you know, uh, yeah, but the Yeah, we're gonna go with the show, but you know, they asked him a question, so he just responded to that. If they asked him a question, you know, he's allowed to respond to whatever they say. But uh, so here's what I'm right. saying: we're 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 talking to an Israel of God member, and the official doctrine of the church denies the person of the Holy Spirit, calls the Holy Spirit an it, which is disrespectful, seeing that he's a person. And 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 I'm glad that you're saying you affirm the personality and deity of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad for that. Uh, that's a good thing. But honestly, there's not really many Hebrews-like groups that do, and that's a big problem because then you're denying the full uh, the full revelation of who God is and His character. And so that's a real problem that I have with a lot of the groups is this denial of the Holy Spirit. Everybody thinks that uh, the real problem you know people be having is oh uh, you know you're, why are you saying that we can't be Jews? That's not really the main problem. It's other stuff like this. When you start denying the person of the Holy Spirit, that, that's the thing. I'm glad that you do affirm it, though. I'm glad for that. So if you do, then I'm glad to hear that. And I hope that you can teach and spread that among people of your variety more and more. All right, so we're going to get back to the audience a little later on. We're going to go back to the format. We're going to go to now Brother Alvin who's going to present a topic or a question for five minutes. You know, you can elaborate and expound on it with scriptures for five minutes. He's going to present either a question or, you know, a subject for Vocab Malone to answer when he comes back to respond. With Alvin, five minutes, go ahead. Okay. I'm going to go to Isaiah 43 because this brother, you know, he's he saying people don't baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, I can't speak for nobody else, but we do, and that name is Jesus, and I can prove that with the scripture, but that's for a subject at another time. But that third, that third bin, and the guy here, you can't find it nowhere, neither can you read him, and I love for him to, for him to read that as this three entities in the guy here. But uh, I'm going to go to uh, Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and I'm going to just bring this out. To open up the conversation Isaiah 43 And I'm going to pick it up in verse 7 And it reads Even everyone that is called by my name For I have created him for my glory I have plumbed him Yeah, I have made him 
that's called by his name. His name is Israel. I want to see how this brother disqualified this. Uh, verse 10, ye are my witness, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. See, we know the true and living God. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I'm going to go back up to verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, you're talking about Israel, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. That's why Jesus said, when you touch Israel, you touch the apple of the Father's eye. And a lot of people claim they read this book. They don't talk about the gospel. I, heard, I, I hear a lot of people say they deal with the gospel, but the gospel is the coming kingdom of God. And this kingdom of God got something to do with the king that's going to run it. And this kingdom must be established by bylaws. And the laws is technically the covenant, the Ten Commandments. You're not going to get away from keeping them commandments. And the kingdom must be filled with people. And the kingdom is Israel. And we can read that. I'm going to drop down to verse 21. But a lot of people, when they read this book, they don't even bring out Jesus being the king of Israel or the kingdom that's coming to this earth. Like in the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Because ain't nothing wrong in heaven. It's down here on the earth. And the Lord is going to establish this earth through his people. And people can't get away from that. But every time they want to deal with this book, it don't have nothing to do with Israel. It don't have nothing to do with the king of Israel. And it don't have nothing to do with the kingdom because a lot of them say they're going to heaven. But I'm not I'm not poking no shots at nobody. But uh, that's the case. That's what it is. Verse 21. It said, this people have I formed for myself. They shall set forth my praise. That's why we keep the Sabbath. That's why we keep the feast day. That's why we keep the commandments. That's why we keep the dietary law. The world don't do that because they're not here to set forth the praise of the Lord. Only Israel is. I'll address with that. It's written. All right, so let's go to vocabulary and response. Five minutes back. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not exactly sure what would be the part I'd be responding to, but let me let me say a little something about what I think he was in general saying. I think uh, he's kind of saying, hey, um, you know, you're coming against us, and therefore you're coming against Israel. Therefore, you uh, you better watch out uh, because, uh, you know, I think that's what he's basically saying. Uh, now, check this out. Uh, that's really part of the discussion, though. You know, I understand you're assuming – but you're you're assuming what you need to demonstrate when when it's it's taken as a fact that you know you are Israel in that sense. But the thing is though, and this is the the thing that I think is not really seen that should be seen clearly under the new covenant. The definition of Israel is greatly expanded, and in fact, your own church recognizes this because you call, if unless my um, understanding is incorrect. Uh, the Israel of God church calls uh, Gentiles, people they view as Gentiles, who come in a- as Christians and all that and fellowship, spiritual Israelites. So uh, – and there's some truth to that in the sense that when we look at Galatians 6.16, which is, again, that's where the name Israel of God comes from, uh, we're looking at, number one, a mixed congregation there at Galatia. And yet my understanding here, and I'm willing to talk about this. Is that Paul is identifying the church, Christians, as the Israel of God. And so the idea of don't touch Israel uh, in the, in, is, is a different thing now under the new covenant, number one. And then that gets in relationship to another thing you mentioned. You basically implied, because you see me as a Gentile and yourself not as a Gentile, that I'm out of order by trying to teach somebody. Now, first of all, I think that's ludicrous. Because you you said a number of times we're not going to deal with any Greek. Now it's it's difficult for me to see how somebody who doesn't know any any Greek is saying 
uh, the person who does know a little bit of Greek, and I don't claim to be some teacher, you know, I'm just, as far as Greek goes, I couldn't teach a Greek class, but the person who does know how to navigate a little bit, uh, they're not allowed to teach, but the person who doesn't, uh, they are simply because of their ethnicity. And that's, again, even though I love the men I met, Israel of God, they still have an ethnic hierarchy, which goes against Galatians 3.28. And I'm going to give you two examples from Scripture to show you that what I'm saying is valid. Number one is Titus. Number one is Titus. Titus was clearly a Greek. How do we know that? The Scripture says he was a Greek. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 3, now there's two interesting things here. If the law is is important now i'm talking about the ceremonial law here if the ceremonial laws are so important then we should be forcing gentiles to do them but nonetheless brother paul says in galatians 2 chapter 3 neither titus who was with me being a greek was compelled to be circumcised so titus is a greek but then guess what you read titus chapter 1 that's that letter there uh that is written to titus who is a pastor this is the same man and what does it say paul was instructing him to do to appoint bishops over the churches there in Crete. Now, that means that Titus was not only just a pastor of one congregation, but his job and task was to set leaders over multiple congregations there in Crete. Now, I brought this very issue up to Israel of God members when I met them in person one time, and what they said is, oh, those congregations must have all been Gentile then. But Acts chapter 2.11 tells us that there was Jews who had come up from the feast at Pentecost and we're there at Jerusalem, so I don't see how we're going to believe that the congregations in Crete are all Gentile. When Acts 2.11 tells us Jews had made the journey to Jerusalem, then they heard the tongues that were spoken under the power of the Holy Spirit, not Gabriel. And so Titus is an example, and Luke is another one. Was my time up? Is that what that was? Hello? No, nah, that was two minutes, two minute warning, two minute oh. warning. Okay, the other one is Luke. Um, uh, Luke, uh, the Lord used... The Holy Spirit specifically carried him along, as the Bible says, to be the human author for actually more of the New Testament than any other writer. Now, you might be saying, wait, 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 Brother Paul, he wrote all those letters. True. But guess who wrote more words? Because Luke wrote not just Luke, but he penned also the book of Acts under, again, the divine inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit. So it's pretty clear, I would say not as clear as Titus. But it's pretty clear that Luke, a doctor, which is a heavenly Gentile occupation in the first place. Now, that's not definitive, but it, it, it is something to, to note. Plus his name, Lucas, is actually a Greek name, of course. Now, that's not definitive, but it's, it, it kind of keeps on weighing the balance because we're already showing Titus. All you need is one example to show that your protocol is not correct. But Colossians chapter 4, verses 10 through 11, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas. Touching whom ye receive commandments, if ye come to ye receive him, and Jesus, who is just called Justice, who are of the circumcision. So the brothers he just listed out there are brothers who are of the circumcision. These only are my fellow workers in the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. But guess what? In verse 14, he mentions Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. And it seems like Luke is not counted as one of the brothers of the circumcision because he separated out there. And so that should let you know, once again, we have an idea that he's Greek. Now, if he's being a Greek person and yet writing Luke and Acts, clearly Luke and Acts are teaching people. And you have a pastor as well who is teaching people there in Titus what was clearly a mixed congregation because we see that from Acts 2.11. Cretans came up. Now, how is it Paul's going to put this guy in charge? Time is up. So now let's get into the dialogue session where they can speak to each other. Again, it's going to be 10 minutes for, you know, for the dialogue and speak to each other. Let me open up the phone lines. But Alvin, you can respond. Go ahead. Okay. I understand where you're coming from, brother, but I'm going to let the book tell you what it is, man. It's written, man. Psalms 148, verses 19, 147, I mean, excuse me. He showed his word unto Jacob, the statutes and the judgment unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Any is absolute. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. 
I, I, I can honestly uh, see why uh, David said, praise the Lord. But no cheap shock, but the books say Gentile sacrifice unto devils, man. But uh, that's just what's written. I ain't trying to bash nobody or nothing like that. But uh, praise the Lord concerning what the Lord has put in this book for the edification of what the truth is. Because you can say what you believe, and I could give you my belief system. But if we don't have the truth on the table, then we just talking against one another. And that's not what I'm here to do. Amos, the, 11, the second chapter, 11 verse, it is written, And I raised up your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarite. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, said the Lord? Romans, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 4. And it reads, Who are Israelites to whom pertains of adoption and the glory and the covenants, not just the Ten Commandments, the circumcision and whatever else that comes with the covenants, and the giving of the law and the service of God. Now, who going to service God's sanctuary? Besides Israel, you can't break this protocol. And the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom are as concerning the flesh, you know that Jesus, that y'all claim y'all believe in, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. John 4 and 22, and it reads, Ye worship we know not what we know what we worship, for it is written, for salvation is of the Jews. I rest my case, brother. All right. So if you and believe that the protocol, the protocol, if you believe that the protocol, my guess would be that you don't think that a a, a Jewish or Israelite person they should never, uh, they should not be instructed. In, in, in religious matters by by a non Israelite, correct? They should not be instructed in religious matters by a non Israelite, correct? What you mean by that? Be specific. All right. Well, because you said there's a protocol, and it seems like the protocol is you're saying exactly. is that even though I gave you the example of Titus, who clearly goes against what you're presenting, so that lets us know what you're presenting is not a proper interpretation. Well, it ain't going so against me, brother. I read the book. How- you, you, the word can't contradict the word. That's well, I mean, have I've you ever had a book. Jehovah's Witness? Have you ever had a Jehovah's Witness at your door? They read the book, but that doesn't mean they're right. So come on with that. But let's look at Exodus chapter oh, that 18. That was plain, brother. That was plain. That's, that's what they say, too. So let's look. It, that's your choice, bro, Cap. That's well, your choice. I know, but I'm I noticed the again, book, brother. But you're not answering questions. Let me give you another one. I gave you Titus. I gave you Luke. Now, let me give you Jethro from the Old Testament. So already the nation of Israel was being established because Moses, according to Exodus 18:13, is judging the people day and night. Now Jethro, who's his father-in-law, who is not an Israelite, comes up to him and says, hey, this isn't good. And look at verse 19. Hearken now unto my voice. And then he says, if you do this, God will be with you. And then he instructs mm-hmm. him on what to do. Now, guess this is what's trippy. That hearken unto my voice. Hearken means you better listen to me. That hearken right there can be translated. In fact, m- modern translations translate it m- more forcefully, more accurate, which is obey. And it's shema. It's that, that same primitive root there, which means hear or can be translated obey. Listen to what I'm going to say and do it is what it's saying. Now, Jethro... <laughs> A non-Israelite is instructing Moses, an Israelite, in religious affairs all the way back there. And guess what? Moses listens to him. So this model you're laying out about a protocol, Cause it's told no the one... Man, look, let, let, me, let me say something, Bokal, because he told the man how to delegate with the people. He didn't give him nothing concerning the word of God, brother. We're talking about the word of God. We're not talking about, because God works through people, brother. God Amen. God works people. But when it comes, on, brother, but when it comes, when it comes to dispersing this word, 
Revelation, the first chapter, and verse 1. It's ready, brother. You can't break the scriptures. That's why it's really hard for you to understand, because you can't teach what's not given to you to teach, brother. It's like you going to a trade school to take up a profession for HVAC, heating and air conditioning, and this dude up in front of you, your professor teaching you math. You can't, it's, it's absurd. You can't teach what was not given to you to teach. That's the book, and the, the scriptures can't be broken, brother. I don't know, I, I ain't trying to, uh, you know what I'm saying, make you feel bad. It's just a fact, brother. Our feet going to be held to the fire more because this is the responsibility the Lord has charged us with. But Revelation 1 and 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto a servant John. That is the protocol from God the Father to Jesus the Son to Gabriel the angel and to John the Israelite or to the rest of the Israelites and to the rest of the sons of Adam. That's, that, that's why he said the, they got the adoption. He adopted them first. That's why he told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my son go because Israel is my firstborn. And we are to bring y'all in. Y'all grafted in to this truth. Yep. Did you got a Paul question? Say, oh, hold on, brother. That's why Paul is written. Paul said, don't boast not against the rest. And the main people we were talking to was the Romans. And who they call the church now? Come on, man. Uh, no, 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 I'm not here, a, brother. I, I'm, a, I'm a Protestant, not a Roman Catholic. I didn't Catholic. say he was. I'm, I, I just pointed out a fact. But uh, continue on, brother. Well, so, I mean, I, I appreciate that, you know, you're, you're trying to do what you think is right, but I, I also well, feel like, you're, well, you're not directly answering questions, though, because I'm, I'm asking questions where I'm holding the inconsistencies in some of your, your theology, I'm holding them to the feet to the don't fire. I don't have theology, that's theory, I read the book. Of course, of course you have theology. Theology, means, the what you, theology, theology means, th- theology means what you think about God, so you have theology, okay, so... Th- Let's not do this, man. That's all theology means. And there's inconsistencies in it. I have the word of God, it. brother. Okay. But whatever instead of that making word a, mean, I have the word of God, man. Brother Alvin, you can't just make assertions about you being right. You've got to demonstrate it's the case. And I whenever I ask you a question, I you, the didn't, book, brother. You, never, you never gave a good answer about Titus. You never gave a good answer about Luke. Instead, you just read some what other scriptures. Titus? I showed you the protocol. But you didn't. Well, but like you bring up Gabriel. Okay. Not, is Titus not, a Greek? Hold on. Is Titus a Greek? Is Titus a Greek? What they got to is do with Ti- it? Is, Titus is like but a. Please, p- please answer the question though. I'm, I'm trying to have a logical procession with these questions. Is Titus a Greek? You know what Titus was. Did you read it? What, why can't? Because because some Did of the one Westers and maybe you. Okay, is Titus a Greek? Yes or no, sir? Yeah, Titus was a Greek. Okay, did he appoint elders over congregations in Crete in every city? Did you read that? Yes, <laughs> Titus one five. For this cause, he left I thee in Crete, that Where thou shouldst set in Where order the things. Titus one at, five. Brother? Titus one five. Okay. That are wanting and ordain elders in every city, and I had appointed thee. So, mm-hmm. Titus is a Greek. And yet he's appointing Who's elders. Who is telling Titus this? Who is telling Paul Titus the, this? The, the Spirit of God through Paul. What was Paul? What was Paul pedigree? Well, it was, he was a Benjamite, but he counted that as dung. But I'm asking you about Titus. Benjamin, See, I, I knew. Hold on, the, hold on, I, brother. Don't, hold on. Don't dance around it. What was his pedigree? I just said he was a Benjamite, which Benjamin counted Mike as dung. Of the, tribe of, of, of the twelve tribes of Israel, right? Yes. Excuse me. I'm passionate about this thing. Of the twelve tribes of Israel, right? You can't break the protocol. Okay, it's still so, coming from Israel, brother. So, so Titus is ordaining elders in every city. It says in verse five. So, are you asking me to believe that Who is he all the, the members, from, bro? Uh, all the members of the Who all are in are you the from? Okay, brother. Please, okay. please listen. Are you asking me? I already said we already know Paul because I already know where you would go with this. Okay, but you're, 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 you're asking. 
No, you're asking us to believe something impossible, which is that I'm means in every city. Me, please, please let me, please let me finish because it makes sense if you. I wanted that zone. Okay, that. you're asking us to believe that in every single city there in Crete, it's only Gentile believers, even though Acts chapter two says that Cretes were among those who came up to Pentecost and heard the tongues that day. Now, who would make that journey from Crete? It's a Jewish congregation, an Israelite congregation, Israelite people. Not only that, I don't hold it as canonical, but there are historical parts to the Apocrypha and even First Maccabees. Only deal with that. Okay, listen. Only deal I, with it, brother. Listen, I actually explained before I read it. I explained before I read it. I said I don't hold the Apocrypha as canonical, meaning I don't believe it's the word of God, but. That doesn't mean there's no history in it. There is history in the Apocrypha. 1 Maccabees 15, 15 through 24, tells us about a Jewish uh, presence in Crete there. And so we know there was Israelites in Crete, and yet Paul is instructing a Greek believer to ordain the elders in every city, and he's teaching them. Now let me ask you this. If you are wanting us to believe that there's a protocol, then how come in the very same letter of Titus, when Paul gives – the qualifications for an elder, why doesn't one of the qualifications say he must be an Israelite? Because he gives the qualifications starting in verse 6. Well, wait, no, hold on. I'm asking you a question. Why doesn't Paul name one of the qualifications to be an elder, which is a teacher and leader of the other men and women? Why doesn't he say that the elder or the bishop must be an Israelite? Why doesn't he list that as one of the qualifications? Instead, he says, a lover of hospitality, lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, blameless, you know what, steward of God. We got a lot of questions. We got a lot of questions. If you if you just let somebody teach you these scriptures, man, you you could get them out. So let me show you some in Acts the tenth chapter. Let me show you some. Uh, Acts ten. Uh, first, let me start at verse one. Look at an Italian, a Gentile. It says there was a certain man in such a real called. Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house and gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So God looked at the heart. You see what I'm saying? And, and God going to make this thing happen. He is in control. And the way he shut it up for this word to be dispersed, that's how it is. He can't break it. And so he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up before a memorial before God. And now send me to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. You know, this one is the chief of prophets, right? In Israel life. He lodged with one son in the tenor whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Now, why didn't that angel just tell him? Because he can't break the protocol, brother. It's as simple as that, brother. Can't break the protocol, man. It's written. I right, fam, when I added some extra time for that with dialogue too, <laughs> which is getting real interesting. And hopefully you guys take it down your notes. Like I always say, take down your notes, family, and make sure anything that you hear on the base talk for you, go back and study the information, and hopefully you get some truth out of the information that's being displayed. But we're going to the audience right about now. Once again, we're giving the audience 10 minutes again to chime in and ask their questions and their comments. Again, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. Uh, for those that are new to the show, that's no foul language. You got to keep it clean, keep it professional, and uh, you know, let your voice be heard. So let's go back to the audience again and see what you guys got to say. Again, that number to call in is 319 527 6239. Call in via phone or via Skype. By the way, family, we do have a show tomorrow. We have a debate lined up tomorrow. Actually, we set that up last minute. It's going to be between uh, Soul Rail versus the uh, Neo Saints of Thunder. It's going to go down tomorrow. It's going to actually be a two versus one tomorrow. That's why it's going to be a two versus one. Everybody agreed upon it. You know, that's going to be Soul Rail versus uh, Neo Ariawa and uh, Neo House. Again, they did a brother from the Saints of Thunder, so it's going to go down tomorrow. 
and I'm going to read the title later on. Once I get to the <clears throat> see the subject, I'm going to read the title of the debate tomorrow. But uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Again, we set that up last minute, last minute for the fans out there, for the family. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. But let's get some of these questions out here. Let's go to 559-709. You'll have an answer. Yes, uh, Volcam. Yes, sir. Can I get your phone number? Can I get your phone number, bro? I would like to talk to you about some things. Uh, can I give you my phone number? Uh, yes, sir. My number is 559-709-6408. What's, what's your name? What's your and name, brother? Like to, my name is Kevin. All right. And I like this. Uh, the, the brothers that was speaking right now uh, was uh, uh, talking to you. What's Brother his Alvin. name? Brother, Brother Alvin. Alvin. Brother sure. Alvin? Sure. How you doing, yeah, my brother? Alvin. I just want to. I just say. Well, all right. How you doing, my brother? I just wanted like to try to uh, share something with you. Every time somebody try to give you a, a scripture. You run to another scripture to try to combat that scripture. And what do that. people don't understand is that you got a veil over your eyes that you can't see. That's why you keep running. You don't want to answer vocab questions. What the man saying was Titus was a Gentile, and he opened up churches, and he preached the word of God. A Gentile man. Under, under, Not a Hebrew under, under, uh, under, under Israel life, brother. Under Israel. But he preached the word, my brother. Hey, he brother. was a Hebrew. He was a What's your name, Kevin? Life. He was a Gentile, my friend. What's your name, Kevin? My name is Kevin. Yeah, yes, sir. What's your take on this right here? Jesus say I am the true vine in uh, John. What's that, John 15? Uh, John 15 and see we gotta let the scripture talk man I mean if you think I'm blind I mean that's that's your perception you know you entitled to that but I'm gonna continue to read this book John 15, John 15 they want to say I am the two excuse me 15 what 15 and one I right. said I am the true vine what you say, brother? You got yes, something sir. to say, brother, or you going to let me read? Go ahead and read, sir. Oh, okay. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Man. You see, go to protocol again, from the father to the son. Every branch in me that there is not for fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The word which he spoken to who? Unto Israel. We can read that it is written. Verse 5, he said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth more truth. For without me, ye cannot do nothing. So Jesus is telling us right here, you can't do nothing without me. The Father sent Jesus to work, wake his priests up, to adopt his children, to bring the rest of the sons of him, which is his children as well, back to the Father. And how he did that is through Jesus, to Israel, then to the rest of the nation. You can't break that. If you don't abide in Jesus and take that for what it is, then I don't know what to tell you, brother. But that's that's what it is. The book say he only dealt with Israel. He only gave his words, his judgment to Israel. It is written, what what advantage is it of circumcision? Much every way. Because chiefly, because the them. Let me go look that scripture up. I don't want to take no shot in the dark. Excuse me on that. Uh, what is that as a jail of Duke being a Jew? I'm trying to. I got to drop that one. Oh, right here. See the Lord with me. Uh, Romans 3. What advantage then have the Jews, or what profit is there of circumcision? 
Much every way. Much every way. Every is absolute. Jesus, what verse you read? Mainly, because, verse 2. Mainly because that unto them were committed the oracle of God, the answer to God. You can't get it from nowhere else. It is written. It's all over the book. You know, I, I just went through so many uh, witnesses from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Forgive me because I'm passionate about this word. And this brother came over with a couple of scriptures about Titus and some absurd uh, information thinking Luke is a Gentile. And, and he's basing his foundation on that. Come on, man. Y'all need to be taught, man. By Israel, man, that's the protocol. No, no disrespect to you, but that's that's the way it is. I can't give you nothing but thus says the Lord. I can give uh, you let's let Vocat, let's let Vocat respond. Yeah, Vocat, you can respond. Um, an interesting thing about this is one of the primary teaching offices throughout history once Israel was established as a nation was the priesthood and they were to teach the other people that was one of the things they did now later on you know Pharisees arose and rabbis but those aren't actually biblical offices there's no place laid out where they're supposed to, uh, to, to do that although Jesus was called a rabbi it's not a biblical office in a technical sense priests however are though and, uh, you know, priests had to be of a certain lineage, and they had to be of a certain line. And later on, uh, once the priesthood, in a lot of ways, was corrupt, uh, Yahweh rose up prophets who would speak forth his truth. And they taught the people. They explained what Yahweh was doing at, 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 at that time. And they also reminded Israel of her covenant promises that she was supposed to be bound to. As well as the covenant curses that would come upon her if she didn't obey the word of the Lord, which oftentimes she did not. Now, in the new covenant, there is no priesthood. That office is done away with in the technical sense of must be from the line of Aaron, a Levite. And, of course, the duties related because there is no temple by which to do said duties. And, in fact... There's a lot of things that even you could do as a priest now in the, in the, uh, now under the New Covenant, such as inspect people for skin um, uh, deformities to determine whether it's leprosy or something else. That's not done, you know, being declared by the that, – technically, that could be done without the temple. But my point by saying all that is is the priesthood, which was an established order of teaching throughout Israel, is done away with now in Christ. And, and, and so this idea of like all – all Israel or teachers or something like that is not even really a biblical one, but the thing is the, the leadership structure the, is different now in that it's sort of flattened out as the priesthood is done away with, well, he and now all Christians are a royal nation. Said, the holy priesthood. You said the priesthood, the priesthood uh, concerning Israel office is, is abolished, and why did Paul just tell you to, to them was committed to oracles of God? So if you go to somebody else other than Israel, you're not getting the oracles of God, my brother. That's book. It's written. I can read it. Okay. Do you do you believe that the priesthood has been disannulled? Say that again. Do you believe that the priesthood has been disannulled? Oh yeah, it's the Mel Melchizedek priesthood. Okay. What is that? Was the, the role of Israel? Was Melchizedek an Israelite? Melchizedek was Jesus, brother. When he came in the flesh, yeah, he was Israel. No, no, no. Melchizedek was a Gentile. He wasn't even an Israelite. No, no, brother. No, brother. Okay, no, what's your brother. evidence that Melchizedek... Well, wait, wait, what's your evidence Melchizedek was an Israelite? What's your evidence Melchizedek was an Israelite? I didn't say Melchizedek was an Israelite. Melchizedek oh. is a spirit being. He's Jesus. He, no, no. Melchizedek is an actual man who actually met Abraham for real, and Abraham paid him tithes. Remember that? In yeah. Genesis? Let's, let's go to the scripture. Yeah, let's go to the scripture right quick. You so said you said man, the, right? the new order is Melchizedek, but Melchizedek's go, not go, even an Israelite, ironically book. enough. Let's go look at... Uh, 
Free Bros. Free Bros. Uh... Why are you pointing that? Let me let me read what Genesis fourteen eighteen actually says. It says Melchizedek was the king of Salem. This is this is a, a, a real person. He's he's not some he's not some uh like you know being that, like a phantom or a phantasm who's like jumping oh, in and out. He brought forth bread and wine and he was a priest of the most high God and that's the same order of which Christ is after. Oh. So you're saying that modern I know, brother. That, I know. Let me let me let me let me read you some, brother. Well, uh, I'm waiting, but, you know, it's taking a minute, so I had to jump uh, in there, my friend. At, uh, we're going to start at verse 10. Of what? Uh, Hebrews, the seventh chapter. What's up? Uh, All right. They'll keep it there. They like unto the Son of God. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of slipping on my scripture. I need to uh, be refreshed on what that scripture is. But I'm going to read this. Uh, my, uh, oh, remember you got your reader too now. You got your reader, brother Alvin. You still got your reader. Remember that. You got your reader there. Okay, I got you seventy two now because I, I I'm kind of moving kind of fast, so I, I'm on it, man. I, I ain't trying to step on his toes, but uh, I'm gonna read uh verse verse seven and uh sorry verse no chapter seven and verse one. It said, for this male key to that king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abram, returned from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that the king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother. So that disqualified him as being a man, without descent. Have a neither beginning of days nor ending of life. You ever seen a man like that? Not me. But made like unto the Son of God, a body was priest continually. Now, to show you that Melchizedek and Jesus is one and the same, brother, you cannot have two high priests. And the reason why the Levitical priesthood, the, uh, the high priest, would come in office, one had to die out in order for the other one to come in the office. But Jesus don't die, Melchizedek don't die. Order don't necessarily mean like coming one after the order. It could be the directive you coming in. And I'm going to show you the directive that, that Jesus and Melchizedek came in. It's the uh, priesthood, the office of life, even eternal life. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And it reads, this when Jesus was going to die. Because a high priest has to have a sacrifice to make atonement for the people. And Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He sacrificed himself. That's why he was the high priest. And that was his sacrifice that he presented for the Father, which was already determined by him and the Father before the foundation of the world. 26 and verse 26. And as yeah, they were seizing, Jesus, you got something to say, Sal? Yeah, I actually you got some more callers standing by. <laughs> Let's take him, yeah. Why don't you read the scripture? Okay, I, yeah, scripture. Let, me, let me point this out. Let me point this out right quick. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink it. Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin, or the atonement, or the forgiveness of sin. Now, you say, but I say unto thee, I would not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That determined that it's wine, because, you know, grapes come off the vine and make the wine. He brought forth the bread and wine. Let's look at what Melchizedek brought. Let's, let's, it's going to be the same thing. Genesis 14, and I'm going to read that, and I'm going to let you carry on, Sal. But i got to point this out, because you have to understand these things when you go dealing with these things, when you go looking into these things. You don't want to commit spiritual suicide, man. And they say, 
18, chapter 14 and 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. It can only be the priest, one priest. The bread and wine represent because ain't no death where they come from. He didn't bring the fatty calf after his victory. He brought forth bread and wine because there is no death where this high priest come from. And the high priest initiates the altars of the Father. Therefore, Jesus did the same thing, one and the same. Uh, okay, you can respond real quick. And then we're gonna go to the, uh, uh, I'd rather I'd rather just take calls if we could. I think we ran that ran that into the ground. If you're okay to take calls now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take the next caller. We'll go to three one two eight eight five. You're live in there. Hey, grace and peace in Jesus' name, brothers. Um, this is Brother Azar in Chicago. I didn't get to hear the whole debate. One of my brothers called me, Brother Mikael, told me this was going down. I came in on the point about uh, the priest of God and uh, the brother that he just read once something I was going to read, which was Romans 3, where it actually does say that the oracles, all the answers of God was given unto Israel. But let's go in the Old Testament and read that as well. Let's go to Amos 3. And we're going to read verse 7. The Lord says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. All of the prophets were Israelites. Go up to verse 2. He tells them, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So he didn't know Gentiles. He didn't know anybody else but Israel. That's why he also said, therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Let's go back to Psalms 137 and verse 9. This is the Lord again, the most high priest, he, who he just got finished talking about, Jesus. He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob is Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. The other nations don't know his judgments. Only Israel. Praise ye the Lord. Grace and peace in Jesus' name, y'all. All right. Vocab, you want to respond? Just briefly, so even though on a personal level, Israel of God is much kinder, much nicer. You know, when I was there among them, man, a, a gentleman offered me his sandwich because, you know, I didn't know how long it was going to be. And, uh, you know, we were there and uh, it took a while and we stayed afterwards and talked even longer. I mean, it might have been four or five hours that day. And so, I mean, some, uh, someone shared with me their lunch, you know, and my friends. Um, they, they heard us out when we, we, we spoke all of that, you know, we disagreed on some things, but resolved it in a brotherly fashion. So I can speak that, about that personal experience. And, and this is not all just, you know, radio stuff. I'd be willing to meet brother Alvin and hopefully I do get to visit Israel of God again, you know, shout out to Jedediah Ben Israel. He's been very kind and generous in multiple ways. However, I preface it all that by saying that, that this is why there's still issues with almost every Hebrew Israelite group I've encountered, even the non-One West ones. Now, One West is the worst. Everybody knows that. Like, I'm not putting them on the same level playing field. But I'm saying there still seems to be baggage that comes along once you say once you believe you're an Israelite for some reason. And one of them is this repeated refrain that you've heard again and again tonight about an ethnic hierarchy. They want to promote an ethnic hierarchy, albeit it's not like the GMS ethnic hier- hierarchy, thank God. But it still is a softer form of an ethnic hierarchy. And when I was even there in the congregation, uh, the pastor over all the Israel God churches, he, he, he went to Isaiah 14, which is a common proof text by Hebrew Israelites, and talked about the handmaiden and the servant. And he, he kind of stopped and paused and made a side comment. He said, I'd like that. I'd like to have me a servant. And, and so you still see this same desire to be, to be served in that way, even among the softer uh, kind of ethnic hierarchy that's still present within Israel of God.
But that's not the biggest thing. The biggest thing I think we really touched on tonight was this denial of the personhood and deity, the Holy Spirit, and the confusion that ensues there. Because once you start getting confused about God, you're confused about who you're worshiping. And that can get you into idolatry because you're not worshiping the true God. And the caller that just called in reiterated this ethnic hierarchy. So no matter how much it's shown that you studied scripture, that you may know more, you know, I'm not saying than everybody, but you might know more perhaps on certain issues than the person you're dialoguing with. No matter how much that goes down, they're just going to repeat to you, well, you can't be teaching me because you're you of the wrong ethnicity. I got this on you, so listen to me. Even though scripture shows that that's not the, this, the protocol, and even though when the office of bishop and elder is laid out in the New Testament, this invisible requirement of that you've got to be an Israelite to teach, to teach and be a, a leader of congregations is not present. And so they're adding a requirement that's not even in Scripture. And I have an issue with that, and I just wish that it could be seen that that's the case because I think Israel of God would have a lot of potential, and a lot of the people in there would have a lot of potential. But there's a little bit of a pridefulness that's going down. Even though it's not as a flagrant, there's still pride that's happening with this repeated refrain of the ethnic hierarchy, and that's why we still do need to have conversations as believers in Messiah. Uh, three, one, two, you still on the air? Dad. Yeah, I mean, I was listening and stuff, but um, the thing is, the, the 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 one thing that I'm having a problem with is before these dry bones started getting rejuvenated spiritually there was a hierarchy in another church and only those people could teach but now that the the truth when it comes to this and and in 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 my church which you just described goes from genesis to revelation but like we just said paul even said that all of the answers was given to Israel um, I could go one more place I believe it's Exodus 19 Let's go to Exodus 19 real quick Alright Because The people That had this book Before we started waking up Had their own hierarchy And Basically through the years They told us we were nothing but the Lord preserved his word. And in Isaiah 28, he said he was going to teach his children in other, in other languages. And that's what he's been doing. And that's why a lot of Israelites are waking up. Now, we're not saying, when it comes to us, we're not saying that Gentiles can't get into the kingdom. We ain't like the mother cats. You know, that's, that's folly. But, but the Lord did say this in Exodus 19. Anytime you have a problem with the, old, with the New Testament or anything, you get confused it's best to go back to the roots of the tree. And this is what he said right here. Exodus 19, verse 3. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus saith the Lord unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. So he only talking to his people again. And, and let's not forget, there was a mixed multitude with them at the same time. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, ye will, if if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, and then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now he already had his Le Levitical priesthood. But he's telling everybody in Israel, ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou, thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And, of course, you keep reading all. Matter of fact, let's read it. I'm not going to assume. Let's go to verse 8. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words into the people of the people unto the Lord. So the whole kingdom is priests. Now, he may have set up a Levitical priesthood, and when he died and his blood was shed, there was no more blood of bulls and goats. So that's the law that was taken away, not the rest of the laws of God. So because the priesthood was taken away, remember, Paul, who everyone likes to run to, is a Benjamite. 
he's not a priest. I mean, he's he's not a Levite. So all of Israel can teach this word. But I agree with my brothers. You look in all the scriptures that I presented. The Lord only gave his secrets and his answers to Israel. And Israel's job is to teach the rest of the world. But that's where we messed up. Grace and peace, bro. All right, before I let you respond, vocab, we only have like a minute on the air. We have one minute on the air, family. You got to call in to hear the rest of the show. Again, that number is 319-527-6229. Again, we only have, a, you know, a, maybe 10 o'clock right now. So we're going to have maybe 15 to 21 minutes left of the show over overtime portion. But again, you have to call in to hear the rest of the show live. Again, the number 319-527-6239. You can respond that. Let me show that this notion of an exclusive priesthood for ethnic Israelites under the New Covenant is incorrect. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. There Peter says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, he's speaking to a, a number of people, and he, he calls them a Christian. He's saying you're suffering as a Christian. So that's how he refers to them in verse 16. Now this letter written to all kinds of Christians – if you, you and suffer as a Christian, that same letter says you are a chosen generation, two nine, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a pure pure people. Two five says a holy priesthood, spiritual house. You offer up spiritual sacrifices. So who's he talking to? Is he talking to a different audience in two nine and two five when he calls them a holy priesthood, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation? Because he says Christian in four sixteen. And and even Israel of God knows that Christians can be Jews and Gentiles. So clearly he's speaking to Jew and Gentiles. He doesn't say if any man suffers as an Israelite. He says if any man suffers as a Christian. So that's all inclusive. And yet he says in that same letter to those same people, your royal priesthood, a holy nation, a spiritual house, all of that. And he emphasizes it even more in verse 10, which says this, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, now have obtained mercy. Those are Gentiles who have come into this beautiful new house that he has built, with Christ being the cornerstone, the chief rock of offense. And so this protocol, this exclusive priesthood in the, uh, under the new covenant understanding of what a priesthood is, is incorrect when you put First Peter together because it's a whole book, and you can't get around First Peter 4.16 in relationship to 2.9 and 2.10. All right, family, so we're officially in the overtime portion of the show. What I'm going to do is we're going to change up the format just a little bit, being that we have a, you know, a little bit of time left. I'm just going to let the brothers um, open up the dialogue for like 10, 15 minutes, where they could just speak to each other about whatever things they want to put on the table for now. And after that, I'm going to get some last words. So again, we do the time restraints. We're going to just open it up for a dialogue for them so they both can speak to each other for about 10 or 15 minutes. And after that, I'm going to get some last words from each special guest. And again, we appreciate the audience out there for tuning into the show. Remember, tune in tomorrow. We have a debate lined up for tomorrow. I believe the topic is who are the how who are the Israelites according to the Bible? Who are the Israelites according to the Bible? That's going to be the soul will versus uh, the you know, saints of thunder. Uh, it's going to be a one versus two, two versus one. How you want to put it? Make sure you tune in tomorrow. But uh, let me open up the phone lines. Alvin, brother Alvin, you can go ahead uh, yeah. and you know speak to each other. Go ahead. Brother Volcal, I agree with you that that's a that's a mixed multitude, you know, the Gentiles included, you know. So we we the God house is a house of prayer for all people. Don't get that misunderstood. And you know, I'm not on here to compete or, you know, the word of God. Let that prevail, you know. Let God be true and every man a liar. But you have to understand, brother, it's just a protocol to the thing. It's just like this. If you was taking Taking the exam, but you want to answer with your own perception or would you want the correct answer? You have to ask yourself that, brother. You know what I'm saying? Despite what you feel, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I don't want to, you know, direct that towards you, but it seems like you, you just got a problem with us being the, the ministers of our God, man. I'm going to read something to you, man, that uh, acts. What Paul said when 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 the Gentiles 
wanted to hear the word of God. Uh, they say, uh, Acts 13, excuse me, and verse uh, 42. And when the Jews were going out the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost a whole city together to hear the word of God. See, because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom of God coming and, and, and us trying to edify and show servitude to one another according to this word, man, so we can get to it. So that's why it's conducive for us to hear this word. So verse 45, they say, but when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and speck against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. See, it ain't nothing changed. You know, you got some hardcore brothers that have come down on me like, oh, you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus. You know, ain't nothing changed. This thing is just different players, man, different generations. Solomon told you ain't no new thing under the sun. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it is it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. You can't break the protocol. Even Paul then then just emphasize this just right in, in, in this verse right here. God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of level life and light, no, we turn to the Gentile, which that was the author that Jesus Gave them. 47. For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light unto the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the sal- for salvation unto the end of the earth. Brother, if he sent Israel to be a light to the Gentiles, and don't, you, this could be a detriment to the whole world. And these priests don't wake up. You're not getting no light. Nobody is getting light when God told the end from the beginning, and, 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 and that's not, that's not going to happen. You see what I'm saying? Isaiah, the 56th chapter, just to let you know, man, this thing is about the people of God, man, not just Israel. It's about all Adam's children. Thus said the Lord, keep ye judges and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. He coming. Blessed the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Now, a lot of people disqualify the Sabbath. These are the oracles that you need to be taking heed to so you can get the information. And then, brother, you might can enlighten somebody. But still, the protocol is what it is, and we can't change that. Drop down to verse uh, 5. We say, even unto them, uh, I mean, uh, verse verse 6, also the son of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord, that's any other nation, to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant with stipulation. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath, you got to keep that Sabbath. You got to keep the commandments. This is a warning to everybody that's listening on this very station. This word is the truth. Don't don't even don't even consider me. Just consider what this word is saying. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house of prayer Their burnt offering and their sacrifice Shall be accepted upon mine altar But mine house shall be called The house of prayer for all people But you've got to take hold of this covenant And according to Deuteronomy The 34th chapter I believe it is Exodus One of them But it is written Moses wrote after the tenor of these words Moses wrote and it was the Ten Commandments. The covenant was the Ten Commandments. I'm sorry, y'all paraphrase that. I would like to go show you that, but I don't want to dominate the time and, 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 and the uh, format. So I'll rest with that. Yeah, uh, so tonight, you know, um, 
Brother Alvin uh, reiterated as well as callers who agree with him that there there's a protocol, um, and I I would like to know if if there really is such a protocol. Why Scripture seems to be silent about it? Because you have counterexamples: Titus, Luke, Jethro. Not only that, but when there's a chance for Scripture to mention that anyone who's going to hold the teaching office of elder. Uh, it needs to be an Israelite or something like if they're going to teach other Israelites, they need to be an Israelite, something like that. But it's not mentioned. There's character qualifications and there's not um, ethnic qualifications. And that goes in line with Galatians 3.28. So we have an omission of a doctrine that they're saying is there that's important that you can't jump ahead of. But uh, it doesn't seem like it's actually there. That's That's a problem. The other big problem was this denial of the Holy Spirit's personhood. And the confusion of equating him, not it, with Gabriel. There is an angel named Gabriel, and he gives a message to Mary, and then he refers to the Holy Spirit. So clearly, Gabriel's not the Holy Spirit. And we know it's not; it wouldn't be a big deal to say something dirty against an angel, but it is a big deal to say blasphemous things against the Holy Spirit. Also, we see personal pronouns in relationship to this personal Holy Spirit, showing us he's personal. He also speaks, he said, there in Acts 13, too. That's that's kind of a a done deal in a lot of ways, and also you can grieve this Holy Spirit, and that's a big deal. Lying to him is is equated with lying to God, and of course God is a personal being, and he's not not an angel. And so we see that that's probably the biggest uh, issue or challenge with the doctrine of Israel God and, and is this denial of who the Holy Spirit is more than really anything else. And just so someone can understand, like, where I even got that from, let me read Israel of God, IOG Atlanta, what it says about the Holy Spirit, which is not correct. The Holy Spirit is not the third part of the Trinity. Now, there's a mistake right there. They, they, they said part. Christians never say the Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity. They say, they say the word person. Part is some kind of mechanistic, slice it up, you know what I'm saying, ge- geometry type thing. Uh, but that's not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with person. So part is not even an incorrect way. There are currently only two members in the Godhead. Now, that's strange. There are currently only two members. Some others about to jump out. There's some other players on the bench waiting to be saying, put me in the game, coach. What is that? Currently, the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit can be manifested to man in many forms. That's not correct either. Uh, unless you're going to talk about perhaps the manifestation of the dove, which also contradicts something he said. He said, Holy Spirit can't be like rock, rock be there um, while Jesus is there is what he seemed to be saying, but yet you see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit while the Son is present and while the Father is speaking. One form is an angel sent from God to bring to remembrance what Jesus has told us in his holy word, another form of his spirit. I, I, th- th- there's no scripture given for that. Uh, there's some scripture below. Maybe that ties up with it, but I don't think it's going to work. The word that the angel brings to a man is the power, thoughts, and spiritual extension of God. This is just confusion, honestly. This is not a clear doctrinal statement, and that's why the members of Israel of God, even though they're generally kind, genuine, sincere people, have confusion in relationship to the nature of God because they, they, de, they de, um, denigrate the Holy Spirit into to an it or an angel. God begets true Christians as his sons and daughters through his spirit, God's word. It strengthens. It strengthens the Christian spirituality. Now, I don't understand. If the Holy Spirit can be Gabriel, Gabriel is a personal being who speaks and communicates and messages and everything else. He's not an it. Spirit be an it. This is just confusion here. It strengthens the Christian spiritually, converts his mind, and serves as an earnest or beginning of the transformation to obtain eternal life. So that's where I got it from is from the, from the beliefs of the website. So those are the two biggest issues I've seen. Now, Brother Alvin uh, messaged me, and he had said at one point – that he had answers to all the seven questions I had out of Deuteronomy 28, but I want to stop to make sure I'm not just going too long. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to that tonight, but I'd be willing to if we could. But uh, that's all I want to say, kind of recapping everything. Okay. Uh, all right, but that uh, Yeah, uh, let's look at this thing according to the book. See, that's, that's, that's the key element to this, this, this whole situation of life. Is this word that is spirit and is very much alive. First, Second Peter, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us. Same common 
faith. I mean, it's one, it's one gospel, one word. It's, man, everybody telling the same story. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Where's that third being there? Let's go to the last book in the Bible, the 21st chapter of Revelation. The new Jerusalem will come to the earth. 21 and 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple thereof. Where the third one? That's still true. Drop down to verse, uh, verse, uh, matter of fact, go back to verse 22. No, verse 23. My fault, excuse me. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God, that's one, did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Two, where's the third one? We in the kingdom of God now. Where's this third entrance? Revelation 22, starting at verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Two thrones. Where's that third throne at? Where's this third entity? Why hasn't he showed up in the last book of the Bible? Let's go to uh, Hebrews, the first chapter. And then read. See, the book The book will clarify what the truth is. That's why I read the book, you know. That's why this, this thing right here is conducive to salvation. It's, you have to eat the book like the Lord told you, thank you and John them. You got to eat this thing, man. But you got to go according to the protocol. Uh, verse, uh, verse 8, Hebrews 1 and 8. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God. He called his Son God. It's forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God. Jesus the Son, that's one. Even thy God, Jesus the Father, that's two. Have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows. If he's anointed above all his fellows, it's only these two. Where's the third one? Where's the third one? Psalms 110. Psalms 110. And it read, I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. Many witnesses, all telling the same story, brother. The Lord said unto my Lord, the Father said unto the Son, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemy thy footstool. That's where Jesus is at, on the right hand of the Father. Drop down to verse 4. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. No, verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of thine, rule thou in the midst of of thine enemy, the Lord, the Father, the rod of thy strength, which is Jesus. That's two. Where's the third one? Where's the third one? And I identify who he is. Verse 3, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the door of thy youth, because he's never getting old again. He died at 33 years and a half years old, and when he came up out of that, he was God. He don't die. He has no beginning. He has no ending. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest after forever after the order of male cheese of death. This is the father talking to the son. Where is the third one? When is this third one going to pop up? John, the first chapter. John 1 and 1. And it reads, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word with God, that's two individuals, and the Word was God. One is the Father, one is the Son. Before Jesus came in no flesh, it was no Father and the Son. It was just God, two in the family, like man. To find that everybody in this creation. More than one member. Uniplural. One family, more than one member. But you can't get this third this third individual. And to prove that, 
Colossians, the first chapter, to show you that he's the only one, the only one that's in that family. Colossians 1, and it reads, Colossians 1 and verse Verse, uh, verse 15. No, I'm going to start at 14 so you know who we're talking about. And who and after have that, we have the his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created and made. Verse 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Nobody else can sit in that branch. He is the only one that's on the right hand of the Father, that's within the God family, from which he came from and went back. God was manifested in the flesh and received back in the glory. God took man to being God again. I rest my case. Can't find that third All right, we got to go to vocab, and what I'm going to do is um, we're going to pretty much get some last words. I see I see a few people pressing number one. Maybe we'll get some quick comments real quick, and after that, I'm going to pretty much get some last words from uh, for the special guest. But vocab, you can respond. Yeah. yeah, when you read John 13 through 15, the number of times uh, Christ speaks about the spirit of truth, the paraclete, who is another comforter. So Christ is the first. That means the second uh, comforter has to be like unto him. And when he speaks about the Holy Spirit, he says the Holy Spirit's job is going to be different than my job and the Father's job, basically. He's going to speak about me. The Father and I are going to send him, and he's going to speak about the world of me. So his role is different. Like the caller asked earlier, is there a ranking system? Not in the way you might think, but there certainly are offices or roles in each place. Now you asked where's the third one. I'm going to give you eight scriptures to show where the third one is. So here's eight scriptures that answer the question you were just saying. At Jesus' baptism, Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, you see there, the Father speaks from heaven, the Son's getting baptized, the Spirit descends in the form of a dove. Then you look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, it says, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's how we're supposed to baptize people. Not You, you said it was just name it Jesus, it says Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses, um, 1, uh, verses 21 through 22, it says, he establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit. Uh, now, now let me go to the next one, which is also in Second Corinthians. It's chapter 13, verse 14, which says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Then you go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, and here's what it says. Through Christ… We both that's, – that's the person that's referring to Christ. Through Christ, we both have access, our access in one spirit to the Father, Ephesians 2.18. Then First Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by the sanctifying work of the Spirit to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. Not only that, but you also have Galatians. This is the seventh scripture I'm going to give you. Uh, go to the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Last but not least, Jude 20, 21 says, You, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. There's where the third person of the Trinity is. And again, we want to worship God as who he is, not how we invent him or desire him to be. And as the Lord sovereignly reveals his full nature to us in the new – it behooves Christians to look at the said, these scriptures where that is clear, these, these things are clearly taught and accept them humbly with faith instead of trying to contradict it, counterman it, go around it, invent something else, put stuff in there that's not there, such as making it Gabriel and calling the Holy Spirit and it and all that type of stuff. Instead, humbly bowing the knee to God's sovereign revelation of his person so that we can worship in spirit and truth and not some other God that we've imagined in our heads because we want to be true worshipers, not idolaters.
All right, we're going to get some quick comments from the people out there, the family, and some quick comments. No questions, just quick, quick comments. And after that, I'm going to pretty much get some last brief words from both special guests. Again, we appreciate the special guests for coming on. And again, like I always say, check out the archives. We're on with the iTunes podcast, on Blog Talk Radio, and of course on YouTube, or everything social media, debate talk for you. All right, let's get some quick comments real quick. Let's go to 559-709. Quick comments. I'm just enjoying the show, brother. I'm just listening, bro. All right, I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right, let's go to seven seven three six four zero. Quick comments. Yeah, shalom, shalom, Sal. Uh, peace to you, Vocab. This is brother Mikael in Israel. And uh, yeah, I've been listening to the show. I know you ain't got that. What's up with you, Ock, man? I've been trying to get up with you, man. I know you ain't got that much time. So uh, I wasn't even going to press one. I was just sitting here listening. But uh, I got to tell you, <clears throat> I've heard at least four to five in, um, incorrect statements that vocab have made biblically. You know, what you're doing is you're trying to use a philosophical a philosophical approach with a little theology and some seminary twisted in there. But it can never, ever overtake the scriptures or the most or the priest of the most high God. And that's what you're having the issue with. Now, you know, it was funny because the brother brought up earlier about Melchizedek. You tried to skate past that saying he was a Gentile. And then when he went to Hebrews and showed you that and showed you there can't be two high priests. That could be a look, like the scripture said, Israel is a nation of priests. So when you're under the Melchizedek uh uh office, then Melchizedek, which is Christ, like he said, is the high priest. So you have a nation of priests, and then you have the high priest. You skated over that, and then you made a claim. You said, yeah, this is a real person, and look, he was the king of Salem. Do you know Salem is where you get the word shalom from, or shalom? It means peace. And he showed you that in Hebrews, where it actually translates it and said it means peace. So it wasn't talking about a city. So that was one inaccuracy. And then you tried to be real. You was real crafty with it, Bokeh. No slandering. But you was real crafty with it. And first Peter, you went down and you read, you said, see right here, it says that the Christians are now, but the brother had just wrote, read to you, Brother Alvin, in Romans, and it said Israel possessed the oracles of God. So let's show you what he didn't read, just a few verses up. I think this is uh, verse verse 8. This is what it says in the same book that he read, First Peter uh, chapter 4, it says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, and charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one unto another, as good stewards and a, a manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. It just showed you the only people that had the oracles was Israelites. So these are Israelites, Peter now, that's going out teaching Gentiles now, not the other way around. So that was another inaccuracy, and I think you knew that one, so you just didn't bag up and read from the beginning. Here go one more other thing you said. You try to throw a strong man argument in there and bring up the whole thing with Gabriel and all that because you knew you couldn't deal with the protocol. Now, the protocol, which I'm not going to let you get away from in Revelation chapter 21, which is one of the last books. Let's see what this says. It says a protocol. I'm going to start at uh, chapter 21, verse 11. Verse 10, it says, And he carried me away in the spirit of the great and high mountain and showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descended out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the tw- and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So you can't even get in the gate unless you go through us, uh, the Israelites. So there's always going to be a protocol. There's always going to be a hierarchy. And don't worry about it. We'll see each other again, and I want everybody that's checking this out to listen real close and go back and listen, but go back and check out a book called The Barbarian Apologetics. This is where this whole movement comes from. That's why the brother brought up earlier, they didn't have a problem with hierarchy when the Catholic Church do it, but now all of a sudden they have a hierarchy. These same type of people, same type of people, go out and say, well, the nation of Israel ethnically don't mean anything anymore. 
But then you go look at Judeo Christianity, they have infomercials on at night saying, Would y'all donate money to return God's chosen people back to Israel? Come on, man. The gig is up. We the soldiers on the front line. This ain't that crazy doctrine. We deal with the book, and you know it. They have absolutely no win. It's not personal against apologetics, but we will not stand back and allow y'all to try to dupe our people in these churches because we definitely going to get them out of that false doctrine so we can get true salvation under the real Jesus Christ, our high priest. Shalom. All right. I don't see anybody else pressing number one. You can press number one with a quick comment real quick before we get to the last words. Any quick comments? Y'all can press number one. Other than that, we can pretty much get to these last words from both special guests. Again, this is your time, family. Other than that, we can definitely go get some last words. All right. I don't see nobody else pressing number one. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to 312-885. Last words. I mean, not last words. Uh, quick comments. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Uh, this brother, as again, my brother, Mikael, just <laughs> summed it all up right there. But I just want to read one scripture. Just for edification for everybody. That's fine. I didn't think I was going to get through back again, but again, this is Brother Azza in Chicago. And I want to read this one scripture, especially for people that think that the new covenant means all the law is done away with. Uh, those would understand and know that the new covenant means we're just under the new blood, which is Jesus the Christ. But all the rest of the laws are still in effect. And here's the proof in Revelation 14 and 12. Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So for any of these Hebrews that want to say Jesus don't matter, nah, that's what it say right here. For any of these New Testament people that say the commandments of God don't matter, nah, this is what the book say. Grace and peace. I man, appreciate that. All right, so let's get these last words for the special guests. Let's go to Brother Alvin. Once again, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, last words, brother. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm going to say my last words for uh, Brother Shaw, my uh, uh, brother Wendell. I want to make a comment if you can. Yeah, 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 you can make a comment. Go ahead, Wendell. Okay, yes, brother. Uh, Brother Wendell from the Phoenix camp, and uh, praise the Lord for just giving me the opportunity to to do this really quick. But I really just, I was paying attention to, um, there was a part where my brother mentioned about the veil and everything being that the the eyes be closed, you know, with this. uh, But what that's really meaning is that it's the reading of the Old Testament. It's when you don't read it. It's when your eyes are closed. Now, I just wanted to, I wanted to kind of read this. This one scripture where it kind of shows, and this is this is critical because this is after, you know, when Jesus rose again three days and three nights, and he came a month. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read Luke Luke 24, and uh, I just want to read that Luke 24, and I'm gonna show, believe, in all the prophets and Moses on what they're saying, because. Uh, but we, from the law to the testimony, if they don't speak according to that word, there's no truth in them. So you need both books. That's real. But I just want to read just really quick and kind of and kind of point out the fact uh, what happens when you don't even believe in the scriptures. Uh, John 24:15. I'm gonna start at John 24:15. They say, and it came to pass that while they communed together, they reasoned. Jesus Himself drew near and went with them, and their eyes was holding that they should not know Him. Now, I'm starting off right here, but this is after Jesus rose three days and three nights. And uh, they were wondering why it was gone. But see, if they would have believed in the words of Moses, they would have knew what, what was going on. But instead of them thinking that his body was taken, they didn't have no faith that he would rise again. And see, and this is the only reason why, only way we know that is if we read the Old Testament, see. So we have to in order to get this thing. And, and But let me keep going because I don't want to be all down. I'm just helping read it. And he said unto them, and this is Jesus talking. And it also says their eyes is holding. Another word for holding can mean veil. So this is that veil that was even over their eyes. And we're about to see what Jesus had to do in order to to take to unleash that veil so they can have an understanding. I'm going to just read it really quick. It says, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? 
and one of them, and it says, and the one of them whose name was Cleopas answered, said unto him, Art thou a stranger of Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus Nazareth with the prophet might indeed, it says, uh, I'm sorry, and, sit, and they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and in word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests of our rulers delivered him, and to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trust that it had been he which will redeem Israel. And besides all this, third day since these things were done. And see, this is a lack of faith that was in this Old Testament. That they didn't understand that he would rise again. They knew it, but they didn't believe in it. See, it's all about belief. You know, you, you can't please God without it. It says, yea, a certain, it says, and yea, a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they also had seen a vision of angels, which, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so, as the woman had said. But him they saw or not. So now their body is gone, but they had a lack of faith that they, he would rise again. They still think that somebody took his body. But see, what? look what he's telling me. He says, then he said unto them, O fools and slow apart, to believe all that was the prophets had spoken. Just like my brother said earlier, all the uh, um, he said, all the oracles is given to Israel. Um, all my answer is, is given to the prophets. You understand? So it's, it's, you have to... You have to get in this Old Testament in order to understand the new. But let me read it. It says, then said, it then said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ has suffered these things to enter into his glory? And so he's telling them, and these are people that walk with him, even they faith was lacking. But just to end it up, the only way that he opened their eyes, let me see. Uh, I'm going to start at 32, Luke 24 and 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within, within us? While he talked with us by the way, and while he opened us to the scriptures, to the scriptures, Genesis and Malachi. See, this is what we have to understand in order to get this thing. So when he say that our uh, there's a veil over our eyes, it's, it's from not reading the Old Testament, not reading it. And I'm not sure if I, but I definitely wanted to point that out just to to give some education, yeah, uh, gotta, education on that. Go ahead. You go ahead. I'm done yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I thank you, you, thank you for that time. <laughs> I think, think. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Okay, that last one. Just one more verse. Just say 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was with, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So I'm going to end it with that, but praise the Lord. That's my closing statement, Saul. Peace in the name of Jesus Christ. I appreciate it, man. All right, let's go to vocab. Last words, guys. All right, I'm only going to go to First Peter and John 10. And I'm going to reiterate some things as well as do with, deal with a few new things. First Peter 4:16 again says, "If any man suffers a Christian," so this is speaking to Christians, not just Israelite Christians, but Christians. We got to keep that in mind as we look at First Peter. First Peter 4:16. If any man suffer as a Christian. I'm a Christian. Now watch what it says in verse 11, a couple of verses before. It says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So again, under the new covenant, any man can speak. And if he speaks, if he's ministering in that sense, he better speak as the oracles of God. So this exclusivity you keep on wanting to give to the Israelites, it is different. We're under a different covenant. Things have changed, and the new is better than the old. God blessed the old when it was its time. But now parts of it have been disannulled. It's changed. It's different. The wall of partition between Jew and Gentile has been smashed. we got to deal with the scripture, not what enables us to be at the top of the ethnic food chain. If any man suffers a Christian, remember that, 4.16. That's what 1 Peter 4.16 says. Now also, going over there to 1 Peter 2, it says that you are a holy priesthood, 2.5. 2.9 says you're a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. Remember, this is one letter. Written to the same people, and people that are hearing this can be described as Christians, and also described this way. And verse 10 lets us know again, in the past you were not a people, but now are the people of God. Verse 10. So again, this is clearly showing you 
who is the ones who are not a people? It's the Gentiles of the other nation, but now are a people. So they are now part of the royal priesthood and holy nation and chosen generation because of 416 plus 210. This is all just from uh, 1 Peter. Last thing I want to mention in 1 Peter, there is verse 12 of chapter 1. It says, Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them and have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. So he's just talking about the Holy Ghost, and then watch what he says, which things the angels desire to look into. Again, showing you the Holy Ghost is not an angel. The angels want to look into these things, which include the Holy Ghost being sent down from heaven. They're trying to look it out, look it out and figure it out. Well, if one of them is an angel, that doesn't make any sense. But the angels are looking into it because it's something that originates within the Godhead. And it's something ex executed by the triune God, not angels. Lastly, and this is why this is so important and so fundamental, even though I've reiterated a bunch of times my respect and admiration and the warm ways in which I've been treated when I've been around Israel or God members, I've reiterated that a number of times. I wouldn't speak that way about ISUPK members because they're not that way. you know. So I I'm differentiating. And I understand that they say, you know, so-and-so can be grafted in. I understand all that. However, here's why we got to really hash these things out. Because two callers ago, my man says, Israelites are the door. He said, Israel is the door, and you got to come through us. This doctrine has went to your head so much, and unfortunately it's based upon a mistaken premise, that you, I'm speaking to this caller, are willing to put yourself in the place of Christ because I thought Jesus Christ was the door. John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, not an Israelite. Don't add things. That's exactly, you know, you guys have brought up Roman Catholics a bunch of times. We've always had a problem with Roman Catholics. I'm a Protestant. I'm Reformed. Y'all got to learn the differences. Reformed folks gave their life oftentimes during the Reformation and after because of counter-Reformation measures. We have never been cool with what Rome was trying to pull off. You guys are adding new hierarchies, new steps, new roadblocks by saying an Israelite. But Jesus says, I am the door. And again, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus Christ is a door, not an ethnic Israelite. Let the word of God speak. Relation, peace we embracing, streets be adjacent, exile files, hot not mild like pile style, always show a smile profile, lit like a candle, subscribe the channel, holy words flow out of my mouth like Daniel, love not hate will make us a better nation, this is why we debate, get a revelation, get organized, then we authorize, bring the King James Version cause it's authorized, King Arthur saw a shape fuzz off the side, got pride like a lion in my awesome tribe. Everywhere we amazing, debate talk for you is my favorite station. Shekels in the side, Jekyll's when I hide, cause it's squad like a bird that speckle when it flies. Get the real deal, research in the field, cause you know that man upset you when he lied. Make the mind get enhanced, matter of fact, thanks Showtime in advance. 